What's up guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be talking about micro SD cards. Now bear with me through this video, it may get a little wordy as there's a lot of information to share and not many examples. Consider this as a guide to buying a micro SD card for your drone. Before we begin, I quickly want to highlight the differences between an SD card and a micro SD card, as both have a fairly similar name, but are used in different scenarios. On the left, I have an SD card, which is used for bigger devices, like a DSLR camera or a video camera. On the right, I have a micro SD card, which is used in devices where space is limited, such as cell phones, action cameras, and in our case, drones. A cool feature about the micro SD card is that with an adapter, you can use it like a regular SD card. This comes in handy when transferring clips over to your computer for editing, as most computers do not have a port allowing you to plug the micro SD card in directly. Basically what I'm trying to say is make sure that you're buying the correct size of SD card. When choosing a micro SD card, there are a few things to consider, such as the storage or the size of the card, as well as the speed. Now starting off with storage, which I'm sure most people are familiar with, as it does play a fairly big role when purchasing a smartphone, a tablet, or even a computer. With micro SD cards, we have the choice of 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes, and even 256 gigabytes. The micro SD card that comes with your DJI drone has 16 gigabytes of storage, which roughly holds a single flight of footage when shooting in a resolution of 4K. To get more technical, I did a few tests with the Phantom 4 Pro to find out how much a full minute of footage would store. Here are the results of the little test that I did. If you want to, maybe pause the video and jot down some notes as I'm not going to be going through all of these in depth. The one thing that I do want to point out is the difference between 4K at 60fps and 1080p at 24fps. The difference is almost 300 megabytes per minute larger, which is going to eat up a lot of storage if you're going to be shooting a lot of footage all day. If you are going to be shooting at 4K at 60fps, I would recommend going out and upgrading to like a 32 gigabyte or a 64 gigabyte card. But if you are shooting at 1080p at 30 or 24 FPS, there's no reason to get anything bigger than a 16 gigabyte card as you are going to be able to save some money and you're going to be able to store around 300 minutes of footage. The next thing that we need to consider is the speed of the card. This is how fast the data can be transferred to or from the card itself. Now this speed is usually split up into two different categories. We have write and we have read. Reading refers to accessing the files on the card. Basically this means when you take the files off of the card and then onto another device like a computer, while writing deals with saving data to the card. So that's when you're shooting footage or let's say you're taking pictures, that's when all of those files are being written or saved to the card. To determine the speeds of these cards, they are given a rating, which is easily noticeable on the outside of the card itself, as well as the packaging. This table that I've obtained from sdcard.org will give us a good look at the speeds of these different ratings. To describe what this graph is depicting, on the left we have transfer speeds in megabytes, in the middle we have our different classes of speed, and on the right we have the resolution sizes of video that each class can handle in terms of write speed. For our drones, we are going to want to look at cards that have a speed class rating of UHS-1 or higher. The standard card that comes with DJI drones has a UHS-1 rating, but again, lacks in the category of storage, coming in at a mere 16 gigabytes. Heading over to DJI's website, we will see that under their FAQs, there is a list of supported cards. I can only find these recommendations for the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro, but sadly not the Mavic. Wondering how they chose these cards, I decided to message DJI support through Twitter to find out some more information. The answer that I was ultimately given is that if you use a card that is not recommended, then it may not operate properly. Even though the max capacity for the Phantom 4 is 64GB, I still got away with using a 128GB card. With this being said, I would take these recommendations with a grain of salt. Now at this time, you may be wondering what card I'm using. To start things off, let's go all the way back to when I had my first Phantom 4. Now the micro SD card that I bought with that drone was the SanDisk Ultra Plus. This had 128GB of storage and also a UHS-1 rating. Now when I bought my Phantom 4 Pro and I was trying to use this card, for some reason when shooting in 4K at 60fps it was saying that it was writing slow even though DJI does recommend a UHS-1 rated card. Uh, so anyway, maybe it's just the card itself, I went out and I bought a brand new one. The one that I'm using right now is the SanDisk Extreme Plus with 64GB of storage and it has a UHS-3 rating. 
Now I have two of these, they're super fast. UHS-3 might be a little bit overkill, but it does save me a lot of time when I'm trying to take footage off of the SD card and then put it onto my computer. So guys, that about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new around here as I have been trying to upload daily. Also, leave me a comment down below saying two things. So first of all, let me know if you have any questions. And two, let me know what micro SD card you're using. I'd love to know what the mass majority is using as far as speed and gigabytes go or storage. Uh, so guys, anyway, as I said, this video is coming to an end. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.